Good win, uh, one we obviously needed. I thought our defense was better. Start to the second half was, was much better than we've been. Um, I thought our defensive intensity, we sustained it um, for longer periods than we have been. And, uh, you know, we, we need to win our home games, and uh, we won that one, and it was a, uh, it was a big win for us. So uh, proud of our guys. I thought a lot of guys played played well. I thought we had pretty even distribution on things, and, and guys, uh, you know, guys played, uh, guys played hard, and guys, guys, played, uh, guys played well for us. So that was certainly, uh, certainly a positive. It seemed like that was one of your better second halves of the year, just more con consistent all the way through, no really dips. I mean, it was fast start and pretty even all the way through. Was, was, was yeah, we've been, you know, we spent a lot of time on that, talking about that, working on that in practice. And I was happy to see some, uh, happy to see some carryover. I thought the first, you know, I thought we should have been up a little bit more at halftime, but I thought the first uh, five to seven minutes of the second half really set the tone, make them call the first time out. We scored a couple easy baskets. And uh, you know, I thought uh, I thought we we made some uh, made some good things happen there at the beginning of the second half, and that set the tone. You guys were a lot more efficient on offense tonight. Could you just talk about just the improvement from last game to this game in, in that department? Well, the ball moved a little bit better. We we played inside out. We got fouled. I was really proud of our free throw shooting, 83 percent. Um, what were we 19 of 23, I believe. Um, so that was, you know, th th that's been a trend the last two games where our free throw shooting's picking back up. That'd be great if that could continue here, uh, continue here down the stretch. Uh, but, um, you know, I was really, um, really pleased with our ball movement. I thought the ball moved. It stuck a little bit there at the end of the first half, which is why we couldn't score. We're trying to play one-on-one -on -one off the bounce, and we're just not as good at that. But when the ball moves, we're, uh, we're very good. Obviously, you coached against uh, Pinson when he while he was at uh, Missouri, um, and for him to to play against them and, and get a win tonight. I mean, how how big do you think that is for him? And is it something that he had mentioned kind of leading into the game? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I think he he wanted to beat him, um, but I mean, I think there's only two kids on the team that played with him, Pickett and and, and Brown. Um, so it's not like he's got you know he knows everybody on the team or whatever. I, th I think there's a lot of new guys, and he. You know, but but certainly, you know, we didn't really talk about it that much. I just I, I just kind of let him be, and um, you know, told him to you know just play his game, do what he does. But um, I think certainly there's something probably a little extra for him in this. It, well, this game seemed like it was the way that you guys had played the, before X had gotten his injury. How much do you think this really reset the tone and how you can really play? Well, we talked about it coming in that we wanted to. You know, I felt like. The last month or so, we hadn't really had an identity. At the beginning of the year, we had a pretty clearly defined identity. We played really hard on defense. Our pressure was really good. We used our defense to turn into offense. And, um, you know, this the past month, you know, since X has been down and we've kind of been working things back, we, we, we really haven't had an identity. We've just kind of been waffling in the wind. So we spent a lot of time in the last couple of days talking about getting back to having an identity, getting back to being who we were. And if we do that, we're really good. I showed a highlight tape before the game of, you know, us earlier in the year, how we were in a stance and turning our defense into offense. And I think our guys, I think our guys understood what I was talking about. And, and, um, and, and, and we certainly played, I'm glad you noticed it, but I thought we played a little bit more like we did earlier in the year. We played a little bit better complimentary basketball. Um, our offense helped our defense out. And I, I thought um, just overall, we played a little bit more solid. And one of the factors you didn't have, but you'd have now, was getting quality minutes out of Sharif. What did you think about his performance? I thought he played great. We need to have Shaq here more often. Um, but um, I thought he thought he played really well. He did a good job finishing around the rim. Had a couple threes go in and out. Did a nice job rebounding. Um, but I thought Sharif played really well. Twentieth win. Does that number mean anything? You know, confidence-wise, was that a goal going into the season, or is it just another game? No, I mean, obviously, when you get to twenty wins, that's kind of the benchmark that you've had a pretty good season. Um, in college basketball, and so um, you know, I'm proud of our guys. It's it's hard to win. It's hard to win. It's hard to win in the SEC. It's hard to win any Division One game, and so um, obviously piling up 20 of them's good. And so I was uh, really really pleased um, to get the win. But you know, we gotta we gotta keep it moving forward. I don't think anybody's gonna be satisfied if we just win 20 this year. So we need to need to keep keep moving. Uh, keep moving forward but certainly um if you'd have told me at the beginning of the year 
we'd be here. You know, now how we got here, everything got a little out of whack. But, um, you know, if you told me at the beginning of the year this is where we'd be, I'd, I'd have certainly taken it. Um, and so it's solid, but we need to keep moving forward. Coach, how much of an effect does a big win, a big second half, have on momentum going into a tough game in, against Arkansas in that kind of environment? Well, we'll see. I mean, look, we, we've you know we've got some guys that play. You know, we got some home bodies, some guys that play a lot better at home than on the road. And that's most teams. I was looking at some splits today from from Auburn after they lost to Tennessee. Just their difference between their home and road splits is is, is pretty pretty remarkable. And, and 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 we've got we've got some of the same. Um, I mean, look, Arkansas, I've seen them on tape and on film. I watched them play part of the – I mean, they have the number one defense in our league. I mean, they got five – They're they look so connected to me, and i, I got to study them more tomorrow. They're just connected. They're in a stance. They have high hand. I mean, it's like a defensive clinic. And then Jalen Williams, he doesn't get nearly enough credit. I mean, he, he's averaging a double-double, and then Note goes for 30 tonight. And so, I mean, it'll be, it'll be a, a huge uh, undertaking – uh, but certainly it's better going in after a win uh, than after a loss. But it'll be a be a huge undertaking uh, going to Bud Walton. It's never never easy to win there. Um, their crowds have been tremendous. Their Tennessee game, their their Kentucky game today, the Auburn game. I mean, their crowds have been off the charts. I'm sure it'll be packed to the rafters um, again for senior night uh, on Wednesday night. And so we'll have a, a, a huge, uh, huge task ahead of us. Coming off the Kentucky game, Brandon Murray, uh, 11 points. Uh, just what did you see from him tonight and how he's finding consistency? Yeah, I mean, look, I didn't do a great job at Kentucky of putting him in very good spots. Um, I wanted to make a concerted effort. We got him going off the ball screen in the second second play of the game. He threw it to X to kind of loosen up the hedge a little bit. But I thought, uh, you know, we wanted to make a concerted effort to get him going, to get him to feel the ball, touch the ball. Because uh, when he does that, his defense is, is, is much better. And he help, really helps us defensively and helps us anchor that defense, especially with his communication and his talk. So um, that was certainly something that we uh, that we wanted to uh, that we wanted to to, to make happen. And, and I thought uh, I thought he did a nice job tonight. Back to Sharif, is is how much you use him kind of going forward in, in March and as you get into tournament play and all that going to be. Based on on matchups, on effectiveness, on foul situations. Well, it's a lot of times. Of it's based on matchups, but it's also based on preparation. Like we really have, you know, three or four guys that can play that. You know, those the the, the last couple rotation spots, and it's based on it's based on preparation. I thought he prepared really well for this game. He knew the plays. Uh, we have a play package for each game. Sometimes. You know, sometimes I go into shoot around and I'm like, I'm going to play this guy. And then they get out there and they stumble through stuff. And I'm like, all right. And there's some guys on our team that really, like, no matter how they practice, you know what they're going to do. But there's other guys that have to practice a certain way to even give themselves a chance to play well. And so, you know, a lot of those rotational guys fall in that category. So it just, it, it's really just, I mean, part of it's feel, you know, um, like against A and M, we play Justice because they play three guards. Like teams that play bigger guys, obviously Sharif has an Sharif or, or or Fudge has an advantage, you know. And so a lot of it's feel and just knowing the knowing the scout and knowing what we got going on. And then and then um, you know really we need consistency and you know we need some of these guys, you know, I'm, uh, Sharif, Justice, uh, Fudge, um, you know, some of those we need some of those guys to play well on the road. Like we haven't played like uh, like if you look at their I mean we just haven't they they haven't been able to produce on the road they've been really good at home in spurts and done a really nice job at home but we need those guys we need we need some of that stuff to travel and hopefully this will give Sharif some confidence and um, and he, he'll get back in here and keep working and give him a little bit of consistency and he can travel and and play well for us uh, play well for us at, at at Arkansas because if he could play well and hit some threes and do what he does, finishing around the rim and his rebounding. I mean, it could give us a little jolt here uh, coming down the stretch for sure. As a former player from Missouri, was Pinson able to give you any insight on the schemes Missouri would play with? I told us what two of the plays were called. Um, but, I mean, they, they, they changed what they've done a little bit. And like I said, he couldn't really give us a whole lot on personnel. Um, in fact, we've still – I mean, we, we, we've run it all year. We call it zoo. 
for Missouri, but we stole one of his favorite plays at the beginning of the year. They call it four, I believe. But we stole that, and we've run it all year. Um, it was one of his favorite plays there, and it's turned into actually one of our better plays, one of our more efficient plays. It's a hell of a play. Um, so we took that from them, and we, we've called it Zoo all year, and we put it in a different little package tonight so we could, could kind of disguise it. Um, we ran it probably tw twice tonight, two or three times tonight. But um, outside of that, you know, they, they, they've changed up what they do um, based on their personnel. And so we took that one set from them. Um, but we've run, we've run that, we've run that all conference play. I think it was your Tuesday presser, maybe where you broke down how the turnovers happen. You have 13 tonight. What did you do to avoid? Well, you know, we, we called too many stationary ball screens in the first half, got strung out against the, against the blitz. You can't do that. Uh, that was four of them. Um, we had a couple more in transition per usual. Uh, that was another couple. I think we had four travels. Um, or called travels, I should say. We had four called travels. Um, I'm not going to comment on the officiating, Rob. We had four. We had four called travels. That gets us to ten right there, right off the top of my head. So I have to go back and figure out what the other three were. But um, we've got to stop with the traveling. Um, we've uh, got to clean up the stuff in transition. Um, then we'll kind of kind of go from there. We didn't have any on baseline or sideline out tonight. That was a positive. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll study them and, you know, 13. We only had five in the second half. That's why we scored a lot more. Than, what did we score, 40-some on the second half? 45 in the second half. So we don't turn the ball over. We, can, we, we, have, we, we had eight in the first half. And so when you don't turn the ball over, you give ourselves a chance to get on the backboard. Obviously, the calendar. Kent's had a rough night, guys. He's ready to get out of here. <laughs> uh, you guys know we call in to, like, the post-game radio show? Did you all know that? So, like, we go back here in the back hallway, and we call into the post-game radio show. Do you all know that? So, like, before I do this, I call in to Chris Blair. Kent calls in. He's calling in on his calculator. He doesn't call in on tonight. <laughs> He's punching the numbers in, 578, whatever. It's like 578,000. Like he has, he punches the numbers in on his calculator instead of his keypad tonight on his phone. Been a rough night for Ken. He's ready to get the hell out of here. So we got one more question. Kent, Kent, Kent nice. I'll get you out of here in just a second. Uh, That's Coach, a true story. Yeah. It's a 100% true story. That is the dog days of February. Yeah. That's um, right. and, and that leads into it's my even question. Getting to Obviously, our SID. It, yeah. Our damn SIDs yeah. falling for it. Yep. But the good news is calendar turns to March in a couple days, and you talked Chris, earlier. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you uh, Make sure you let Bonnet know for me since I don't have his number. Make sure you <laughs> let Bonnet know. All right, sorry, get to your question. <laughs> Returning to March. Yeah, you and, and you talked about, um, you know, kind of getting back to the identity. How does, you know, I mean, the calendar turning and, and that everything that, that March signifies, and well, how does that help you kind of yeah, with the I sense of urgency to get back to it? A lot of times in February – you know, like, look, we've been out of the league championship race for a long time. We've been out of the double bye since, you know, for a couple of weeks now. So you just kind of, you know, you just kind of plan it out. Now, after tonight, you know, in, in my opinion, we pretty much clinched an NCAA berth tonight. We're playing for seeding at this point from here on out. Um, so now you see a light at the end of the tunnel so to speak. Like it's, you know, we've been in a patch where there's, you know, we're just kind of slogging through it. Um, and we're trying to get better and we're trying, but there's no real, I mean, we can't get the double by, we can't win the league. So we're just kind of, eh. But now, you know, we got a chance to pick some momentum up this last week. You're going into the conference tournament. We're going to get in the NCAA, you know, we're kind of playing for seating. So now you got some stuff out there that you can, that you can, um, you know, that hopefully you can get a little momentum. And I've been a part of teams that, you know, it's all about when you get hot. It's all about when you start start moving in the right direction. I've been a part of teams that played great all regular season and just collapsed when we got to the tournaments. I've been a part of teams that kind of sputtered. Uh, we went to the Final Four. We lost three of our last four regular season games. We tipped the ball in against Drexel in the quarterfinals of our conference tournament to even have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. So I've been a part – you know, I mean, you see it happen every year. It's about when you can get hot. When you That's why I was talking about just – getting back to our identity, getting back to what we do. If we do that, we give ourselves a chance maybe to get hot and, 
I've said this for like two weeks. I hadn't said this to y'all, I don't think, but Kent's heard me say it. Like, we need something to like, we had such good rhythm and chemistry for for the first month and a half of the year. Like, we need something to like reignite us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need something to like reignite. We just kind of been stuck in neutral. We need something to reignite us and put us back into high gear. And and hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll we'll, we'll have that. Hopefully tonight's a start of that, We're getting our identity back. And then we need something kind of to pop us um, and and get that rhythm and chemistry and everything that we had back. It's not bad now, but it's just, you know, it's, we're just in neutral. We're just kind of, eh, eh, kind of may. But we need to, boom, get in that get in that next gear. And hopefully we can find that. That's my job is to is to find that. And, and uh, we're going to keep keep trying and keep searching. Kent was, he's 578. It was like five five seven eight's the number. So he was really looking at his bank account, like 578,000. He's calculating all his, all his bonuses. He's a state employee, unfortunately.